I have been growing a crop of tomatoes in my older polytunnel for quite a few years, filling one of the four central beds with these long season plants. I usually get a good crop, and each year things are gradually getting better, though things can always be improved. Because they are such an important crop and take a fair amount of managing to grow well, I think the tomato plants are a good example of the incremental change in methods and management that can occur with a crop. Every year I do something different, though usually nothing too radical, but hopefully enough of a change to be able to harvest more of these delicious tomatoes over a longer part of the growing season, and to make the whole process a little bit easier. This season, the main change that I made was how these long plants are hung or supported off the ground to allow them to grow as long as possible. I sowed the tomato seeds near the end of February, as usual, and transplanted the plants into the polytunnel bed towards the end of April. Because the plants were quite long or tall, due to insufficient space and light in the propagation area, I transplanted them on their side into a fertility-enriched trench dug down the center of the bed. This allowed most of the long stem to be buried without having to dig too deeply. I don't think this is the ideal way to manage these plants, and I would like to improve the propagation space so that the transplants will be in better shape next year, but the buried section of stem will grow more roots, helping to feed these plants over a longer growing season. The small part of the plant that was left above the soil was easy to cover with a double layer of horticultural fleece supported by pipe hoops. This covering, together with the containers of water to act as thermal mass, provided a lot of protection from the frost and kept the plants quite warm even during the few nights of hard frost that we had during the first part of May. And it kept the plants warmer in general, especially at night, which created a better microclimate for continued strong growth during the cold spring that we had. Tomato plants are tall vining crops, or more accurately, they are long vining crops that would naturally scramble over everything and would generally grow much closer to the soil surface. Within the context of the polytunnel, I have adopted methods used by many other growers of planting the plants closer together, pruning them off to one main leader or cordon, and helping them to grow up a length of twine tied to the support wire fixed to the polytunnel structure. In the past, I have wound the tip of the plant uh, around the twine as it grew, which was a relatively simple process, though something that needs to be done quite regularly, and I've accidentally snapped off the growing tips on a few plants in the process. And it was a fair amount of work at the end of the season to pull out the twine before composting the remains of the tomato plants. This season I invested in some biodegradable twine and biodegradable clips that were designed for this type of crop, and I found them much easier to attach, especially when the top of the plant had grown too much. I started the season using only the clips to hold the stems of the plants to the twine, but later I found that a combination of winding up and clipping was the best option. I gradually removed the lower clips as the plants grew for a reuse higher up on the plant, and after I took the time to remove most of the remaining clips for reuse next year, the process of cleaning up and composting the crop at the end of the season was a lot easier. But if I wanted to save time, I could have simply cut everything down and thrown everything in the compost, including the clips and twine, and then gathered up the tomahawks for the following season. But the issue with tall crops like these, especially when they're pruned to a single stem, is they can easily outgrow the height of the space, especially in the relatively short polytunnel like this, and to grow out of reach to easily manage. This means that they need to be either pruned off when they reach the top of the space, something that I don't want to do, or the plants need to be dropped or rehung in some way. In the past, this involved untying the twine, letting out some more, and retying it further along the support wire, which meant I needed to remember to leave enough extra twine at the start of the season, which often got in the way, or to tie on another length of to extend the twine, and both options were a hassle. Of course, many other growers have dealt with this issue, and someone invented a tomahawk, which is an ingeniously simple piece of bent wire hook that the extra twine could be wrapped around. This could simply be unhooked from the support wire, a loop or more of the twine let out, and quickly rehung on the wire saving a lot of time and hassle working overhead. In my larger polytunnel, these tomahawks have been really useful with a large trial of different varieties of tomatoes, where I gradually lowered the plants to give them more space to grow vertically, and moving the hook further down the wires so that the lower part of the stems lay along the ground. 
This is the easiest method, but it does mean that some of the trusses of tomatoes ended up lying on the surface of the soil, which is not ideal and it made harvesting more difficult. In this smaller or lower polytunnel, I decided to repeat a method that I had used last year of tying additional support twines to keep the full length of the plant suspended above the ground. In the past, this took a fair amount of time, with a lot of tying and untying the twine, but with the help of the tomahawks and the clips, the whole process was quite a bit easier. When the plants first reached the top of the polytunnel, I attached a second twine with a clip around the plant's stem at about waist height and tied the other end of the twine to the support wire overhead. I then unhooked the tomahawk, let out a length of twine and re-hung it further down the support wire. As the plant kept growing, I repeated the process of moving the growing tip further down the bed. And when the plant stem crossed the support twine of the next plant, I attached it to this twine with a clip. This was quite easy, though perhaps stressing the clips in ways they were not designed for. And a few of them failed with the weight of all the tomatoes, causing some of the plants to drop during the season. But they were easy to retie and reinforce as necessary. As the plants continued to grow, I continued to clip the stems whenever they passed the next fixed support twine, positioning the stem at a slight angle above the stems of the plants already fixed to that twine. This continued until there was a layer of three or four stems clipped to each twine, creating a horizontal wall of plants hanging up off the ground. At both ends of the bed, I looped the plants around to grow down the other side of the bed in the opposite direction, producing a continuous loop of suspended plants. And because I had removed a lot of the leaves from the lower parts of the stems, the space below the suspended plants was fairly clear, apart from the numerous hanging trusses of ripening tomatoes, which was quite beautiful. This was all good for two of the tomato varieties, which were quite vigorous and tall growing, but the middle variety was considerably shorter and the plants were not very healthy, so they didn't work out well with this method, especially sandwiched in between the two much more vigorous plants. This mix of plants interrupted the flow and the easy use of this overlapping hanging method, and the larger variety of tomatoes should have been grown using a different method, possibly just pruning off the growing tip when they got to the top of the polytunnel space. I had grown 24 plants, 8 of each variety, and harvested just over 100 kilograms of tomatoes in total, from an 8 square meter bed, which is definitely the largest tomato harvest I've had from this polytunnel. This gives a yield of almost 13 kilograms per square meter, or over 2.5 pounds per square foot, which is really good, especially for such a high value crop. This translates to an average yield of more than 4 kilograms, or more than 9 pounds per plant, but the medium-sized Durenia variety was quite a bit more productive. The Gardener's Delight cherry type of tomato being in the middle, and the larger Black Crim variety producing less. Compared to the yields per plant of these same varieties in the other polytunnel, the Durenia did better, the Gardener's Delight did about the same, and the Black Crim produced less well when calculated per plant. But considering that the plants in this variety trial were given about 20% more space, the yield per area is actually significantly better in this poly smaller polytunnel, especially with the Durenia variety. Perhaps there is better soil conditions in this smaller polytunnel, and we probably gave these plants more attention during the growing season. But I suspect that the way these plants were hung and supported contributed to part of this increased yield, as it allowed the plants to continue to grow as long as necessary. And there was lots of space, light and warmth for the trusses of tomatoes to ripen without coming into contact with the soil, and they were quite a bit easier to harvest. With the unusually warm weather that we had this autumn, this ability to allow the plants to grow for as long as possible turned out to be really beneficial. And with the extra warmth at the start of the season under the protection of the fleece, these plants were able to produce ripe tomatoes from the beginning of July through to the middle of November. 130 days or almost 19 weeks of tomato harvest is a record for me in this context and shows the real benefit of starting the plants early and allowing them to continue to grow for as long as possible, as well as growing varieties that can continue to produce in abundance over a long season. When I finally removed the plants, I found that the two more vigorous varieties were between 4 and 5 meters long, in addition to the buried section of the stem, which would have made them even longer and it was great to see so many roots that had developed from the buried stem. 
This was more than twice the height of the polytunnel space, which shows the benefit of this method, or at least it shows the necessity of doing something to manage these vigorous plants. I wonder how long the stems would have grown if I had left one or more of the side shoots to grow as additional leaders, and how much more space I would have needed to give each of the plants. I was quite pleased with how this crop of tomatoes worked out this year, and the revised method of hanging them and the use of the tomahawks and the clips made the whole process of managing them a lot easier. Next year I will probably use the same method of hanging the more vigorous tomato varieties, but to separate out the shorter varieties and to manage them using a different support method. As usual, I want to improve the feeding and soil fertility for these plants, as there were some issues in the season, and I definitely want to get the plants in better condition before transplanting. I think I'll grow the plants in a double row rather than in a single trench down the center of the bed, though I'm not sure if this will make much of a difference with the strong root systems of these plants. In my larger polytunnel next year, I want to explore a couple of different options for leaving some of the side shoots to have two or more stems or leaders on each plant. But in this polytunnel, I want to use this same hanging method to support a single stem uh, for at least another season. The ease of harvesting is a definite benefit of this method, and the clear space underneath seems to help, but I could lower the plants a bit, and the tomahawks and clips make the whole process easier and faster. I really like this overlapping woven structure, and it looks great in the polytunnel with all of the tomatoes hanging down below the plants, even if it does take a fair amount of work. But growing tomatoes in this context and climate is always going to be a lot of work, but the harvest of fresh tomatoes is definitely worth it.